This is the LG 32 EP950, a 31.5 inch OLED monitor that retails for 4000 US dollars. The price may sound extortionate, but in this review, I'm going to explain why for a certain demographic group, the EP950 is actually a bargain by occasionally comparing it to a £30,000 mastering monitor. Keep watching. Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. Unlike every consumer OLED TV on the market today, the LG 32EP950 uses a true RGB OLED panel from Japanese supplier JOLED. The eagle-eyed among you may have noticed the larger blue subpixel size, presumably to compensate for the shorter lifetime of blue OLED material. In terms of the spectral power distribution or SPD, the separation between red, green and blue peaks was clearer than that produced by WRGB OLEDs, though still not as pure as quantum dot based displays. The panel resolution is higher than 3840x2160. But only 3840 times 2160 pixels can be addressed at any one time. This has been purposely designed in line with the screen shift function, which is part of the anti screen burn measure on the LG 32 EP950. Due to the presence of extra pixels surrounding the addressable 3840 times 2160 pixels, a UHD resolution video can be displayed on screen without cropping or scaling, which means you'll be able to see the full picture at all times, even with screen shift engaged so there's really no reason to disable it. Always use protection if you can. OLED's claim to fame is that every single pixel can be switched on and off independently of each other, allowing for insanely high contrast and dynamic range. Nothing epitomizes this better than a star field pattern, where the LG 32EP950 was able to render every star clearly while maintaining true blacks in the background, all without incurring halation artifacts or having to dim the stars down to suppress blooming, which is what happens even on the best full array local dimming or FALD LED LCD displays. In fact, in this side by side comparison against the Sony H6310 dual layer LCD monitor, which carries a price tag of £30,000, the EP950 managed to deliver zero candelas per square meter blacks once all the stars disappeared while the HX310 still exhibited a faint glow, visible in a pitch black room. Near black performance is usually imperfect on consumer WRGB OLED TVs, and it seems that even with an entirely different RGB OLED panel, the EP950 is not spared too. On the default factory calibration, near black gamma on our review sample was slightly too bright in both SDR and HDR modes. For example, on this dynamic range low test pattern from the Spears & Muncy UHD HDR benchmark disk, there is a sharp drop off below 71 code value, whereas the near black gamma response of the Sony h 10 was more linear in comparison. As a result, the shadows came across a bit too bright in this sequence from the 4K Blu-ray of Arrival, which is something you have to be mindful of when grading or color correcting very dark scenes on the EP950. At the time we filmed this video in June 2021, there is no way to rectify this until hopefully in the near future when HDR calibration is added inside Kalman and also LG's own calibration studio software that's currently only limited to SDR calibration, which worked well to partially fix the originally over-brightened near black gamma, as you can see from these before and after shots of this heavily compressed scene from Game of Thrones. Similar to the first generation of consumer WRGB OLED TVs, the LG EP950 manifested subpar gradation just above black in HDR, notably on this moving quantization test pattern developed by Stacey Spears of Spears & Mansell fame, which could be reproduced in some scenes containing very dark shades of grey just above black. Thankfully, the OLED monitor featured higher bit depth when resolving a similar quantization test pattern in SDR compared to HDR10. With these near-black foibles out of the way, our LG 32EP950 review unit delivered excellent color accuracy from its factory calibration across all picture modes commonly used by most content creators. To grade or view high definition SDR content, BT709 is the picture mode of choice, reaching close to 100 candelas per square meter peak white, with no inaccuracies exceeding Delta Error 1 on this challenging color checker SG chart where 140 patches were measured. This is an outstanding result. DCI-P3 picture mode targets the digital cinema standard of 48 candelas per square meter peak luminance. 
D65 white point, 2.6 gamma and P3 color space, and was again wonderfully accurate from factory. For Windows users, the sRGB picture preset currently targets 2.2 gamma, but can be calibrated using the LG Calibration Studio software to track sRGB gamma curve. This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. With more and more people staying home these days, Netflix is continuing to cap the bitrate of certain shows, especially in Europe, which will cause the picture to look softer with more compression artifacts such as macro blocking, pixelation and noise in dark scenes. What if there's a way to access Netflix servers in another country where streaming bitrate is not capped? This is where a VPN comes in. Surfshark allows you to stream content from another country without needing you to be physically there, so you can watch Netflix in higher bit rates and better picture quality. You can also get more content that's not available in your region, perhaps the US Netflix library which contains more movie titles. For less than the price of a Big Mac per month, you can use Surfshark on as many devices as you want in your household, all at the same time. There's 24-7 live customer support, a 30-day money-back guarantee, and even instructions on how to set up the VPN on your LG or Samsung smart TV. And for a limited time only, if you use promo code HDTV test, you'll get 83% off and 3 extra months free. So sign up today and give Surfshark a try. I'll put the link in the YouTube description below. Thanks again for your support. For HDR grading, Peak brightness measured 550 nits on our review sample on a 10% window at D65 white point if you left the monitor's peak brightness setting at its default value of high, which is not too far off the 540 nit figure quoted by LG. The EP950 also allows you to choose the HDR tone curve through the PQ clip point control. Selecting panel peak will track the ST2084 PQ EOTF standard all the way until a hard clip at the monitor's peak luminance. This is typically the correct setting if you are using the 32 EP950 for HDR grading, mimicking the behavior of mastering monitors such as the Sony X300 and HX310. For content consumption, for example watching 4K Blu-rays, setting panel peak to auto would normally be the best choice, since the monitor would then automatically adjust its HDR tone curve based on the ST2086 HDR10 metadata embedded within the video stream. Otherwise, you can also manually select 1000 nits, 2000 nits, 4000 nits, or even 10,000 nits for different roll-off points. For those of you who want to maintain controls over your curves, something I've been struggling to do during lockdown. Interestingly, while switching between different panel peak values, we noticed a bug that added undesirable edge enhancement, which could only be defeated by switching picture presets or power cycling the monitor. We have informed LG of this sharpening bug, and they will be fixing it in a future firmware update. So, with a measured peak brightness of 550 nits, can you still use the LG 32EP950 for HDR grading? We don't see why not, as long as you understand its limitations. When displaying this sequence from Planet Earth 2 which was famously graded to 600 nits, the EP950 had no problem matching the much more expensive Sony HX310 in terms of overall color rendition, as well as HDR pop and depth. Once we venture into 1000 nit territory however, the HX310 started pulling ahead, since the LG 32 EP950 would be clipping any speckle highlight detail above its panel peak, as evidenced by the overhead fluorescent lamps in this scene from Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. You can of course use the 1000 nit PQ clip point setting to recover these specular highlights, but you'll be contending with highlight compression instead during HDR grading, which for me unfortunately involves some degree of guessing even with the help of video scopes, and I hate guessing when it comes to grading HDR videos. Unlike some other reference monitors, the LG 32EP950 doesn't support HLG or hybrid log gamma, which is a slight disappointment, and it doesn't support Dolby Vision either for QC or consumption purposes. Beyond these limitations, the LG 32EP950 was extremely impressive in a couple of respects. 1. Full screen white measured 260 nits on our review unit, representing a more relaxed ABL or automatic brightness limiter circuitry than any other OLED television or monitor we've measured to date. 
bettering even the Sony X300 RGB OLED monitor which has since been discontinued. Because the maximum brightness value of 100 in SDR mode equates to 250 nits, this essentially means that you'll never encounter ABL-related dimming in SDR mode on the LG EP950. Needless to say, the Sony HX310 Dual Layer LCD Monitor, which is capable of 1000 nits full screen, was still way out in front when it came to bright HDR content. But for the majority of HDR material, the EP950's ABL behavior was certainly not crippling. 2. Even in HDR, peak luminance was incredibly stable on the EP950, unlike consumer OLED televisions where the peak brightness measurement would slowly creep up as the OLED panel heated up and image retention kicked in. We are not entirely sure if LG and JOLED have implemented any subpixel wear compensation technology on the EP950 beyond the obvious screensaver and screen shift functions, but our review sample was surprisingly resistant to image retention. Even after displaying a peak white window at full blast in HDR for 10 seconds, then switching to a full view gray slide, we couldn't see any residual after image of the window at all, making us wonder what sort of magic JOLED has conjured. The screensaver function would dim down the EP950 after 10 minutes of static content on screen, then put it into standby after one further minute of inactivity. This IP3 color gamut coverage came close to hitting 100% with remarkable color accuracy shown in, while right intensity coverage was 81%. When displaying a 24 frames per second video signal, the LG 32EP950 applied 2-2 pulldown with a screen refresh rate of 48Hz, so slow panning shots in 24p films remain smooth without telecynic judder. For those of you who are sensitive to flicker and wish to drive the panel at 60Hz even with 24p content, LG Electronics is working on a menu toggle to be added in a future firmware update. Bright uniformity on our review sample was exceedingly clean, with no dirty screen effect, bending or color tinting on full field gray slides. Due to OLED's self-emissive characteristic, viewing angles also held up better than the Sony HX310 whose dual-layer LCD technology affected off-axis contrast and colors. The monitor handled 10-bit gradients in the Display HDR app well. Even though there's no SDI input on the monitor, all common video formats including DCI 2K and DCI 4K are supported, with various scaling configurations allowed through the aspect ratio setting. For example, selecting 1-1 for standard definition video signal would render the image without any scaling. With a native refresh rate of 60Hz, and no HDMI 2.1 or VR on board, the LG 32 EP950 is unlikely to be given a second glance by hardcore gamers, but if you fancy playing the odd Minecraft on the EP950, input lag measured 25ms at 60fps regardless of the picture mode. Sending a 120fps video signal to the monitor would result in an out-of-range error message. Let's talk about the aesthetics of the monitor. In our opinion, LG could have done more with the design of the EP950 to reflect its superior OLED technology and the relatively high price tag. Despite OLED's lack of need for a backlight, the front bezel of the LG 32 EP950 remained fairly thick, though its chassis was naturally impressively slim when placed beside the bulky Sony HX310. The semi-matte screen coating barely has any anti-glare properties, so even the slightest amount of ambient light hitting the screen would cause it to take on the dark blue hue with diffuse reflections. We've been informed by LG that this is a necessary decision undertaken to preserve light output, but unfortunately it does mean that in a bright room, LCD monitors which compete at a similar price point such as the Apple Pro Display XDR and the ASUS PA32 UCG would paradoxically appear to deliver in clear blacks. In fact, at certain luminance levels, for example this 35% video stimulus window against a black background, the internal reflections and light scattering would cause a very faint glow around the rectangle, visible in a pitch black room, which ironically is not dissimilar to the halation seen on full array local dimming or FALD LED LCDs. What we don't think the absence of an effective anti-glare filter is a deal breaker, we actively try to prevent any light hitting the screen when we're using the monitor to grade our HDR videos. In fact, I'll switch off my key light for the moment and you can see instantly how the contrast has gone up.
The OLED panel is supported on a crescent stand, and the whole ensemble is fairly lightweight. It feels more fragile than Piers Morgan's ego when snapped by a celebrity. There's an LED indicator at the bottom right corner of the monitor, which can thankfully be turned off, or used to signal if the ABL threshold has been reached. We appreciated the jog dial at the bottom of the panel, which is easily accessible when you're sitting in front of the EP950. The connection ports face backwards from the monitor, including two DisplayPort 1.4, one HDMI 2.0 socket, and one USB-C port with 90W power delivery. The only supplied cable management solution is something that wraps around a pole, which is not as sexy as it sounds. Let's sum up. The LG32 EP950 is a unique monitor which should emerge as the number one consideration under 5 figures for any content creators for whom accuracy is paramount. Some viewers on this channel may scoff at its lack of 120Hz panel and HDMI 2.1 support, but the EP950 is never targeted towards the gaming market, just like a Porsche 911 is not positioned as a people carrier. Even though its price is relatively expensive at US$4,000, no other desktop monitor in this price bracket is equipped with pixel-level illumination control afforded by OLED technology, which lets the LG32 EP950 render color-accurate images without blooming artifacts, something that's beyond the capabilities of transmissive displays such as full or local dimming LED LCDs. A number of you will rightly point out that the 48-inch LG CX or C10 OLED is a much cheaper alternative, with HDMI 2.1, 4K 120Hz and VRR to boot, but for many content creators, a 48-inch television is still too big to be used comfortably on a desk. Compared to the 48CX, the 32EP950 can render sharper text due to higher PPI, always available full 444 chroma and true RGB subpixel structure, not to mention a brighter picture full screen thanks to less aggressive ABL. The LG EP950 demonstrated some shortcomings especially near black versus the Sony HX310 mastering monitor, but that's really no shame, because the HX310 is at least 7 times more expensive than the EP950, and the EP950 has its own advantages in terms of slim form factor, silent operation and wider viewing angles. With this being the biggest and brightest OLED panel from JOLED, there remain many unknowns regarding the EP950's longevity and propensity towards developing screen burn. LG is selling these monitors with one or two year warranty depending on your region. Despite the uncertainty, I suppose one way of looking at it is that you can burn through seven EP950s and still end up spending less than buying the Sony HX310 outright. Thanks to its OLED driven picture quality and well calibrated calorimetry from Factory, the LG32 EP950 earns our highly recommended award. To watch more of our technical monitor reviews, please click here for our playlist, and I will see you in the next video.